that the energy the place that kind of carries with it outside these walls is one of like prestige. You know, it is figured in several <laughs> films about a young artist trying to make it. In terms of the program itself, um, I was terrified. Like, there's no way that I could be worthy of going to Juilliard and particularly studying with Chris and Marcia. It is the only program where the entire faculty, of which there are two people, are like Tony Award winners. You've known them as names and ideas for so many years. I mean, they're these titans of the American theater. It was Juilliard, it was, and, and Chris and Marcia were so, they were so much my heroes. And it was kind of like that Elle Woods moment in Legally Blonde where I was like, of course I've thought of applying to Juilliard. I've also thought about becoming an astronaut. And wouldn't it be great if I had a third arm? I'd get so much more done. I was about to quit playwriting altogether. It was 1998 or somewhere around there. I was ambivalent about even becoming a playwright until I, I just, you know, we applied. And then several months went by and I didn't hear anything. And I was like, well, okay, well maybe law school. I was sort of at this really chip on my shoulder place in my life and I, I just didn't want to write plays anymore. I was feeling just low and scared. And uh, I got a call. I had no cell phone reception where I was. I was in the middle of the street in Mexico. My phone was cutting out a little bit, but I was like, I can hear you. <laughs> Tell me what's happening. And she was like, you got into Juilliard. <laughs> And I screamed on 71st Street. And I was just in shock. And then I went inside and, and, and nobody in my family knew what Juilliard was. <laughs> they were like, Juilliard? These construction workers were like, what's going on? And I was like, I got into Juilliard. And this guy's like, she got Juilliard. It's no words to describe how unbelievably exciting it is to be going to the Juilliard mainly because there's dancers and they're just walking around in their crazy tights. I remember going up the elevator. It was a big deal. It's Lincoln Center. It looks super cool. You're feeling super badass. And you get on an elevator feeling full of yourself and there's an eight-year-old with a violin. And it really felt like we had joined the Illuminati or something. Um, it, and then they gave us free lunch and I was like, wow, I really have made it. I do remember like immediately telling myself that I had to play it really cool. <laughs> like really not not let them know how awestruck I was. And when I got here, I was just so scared. And I met Chris and Marcia, and all of a sudden, I relaxed. I felt this incredible sense of warmth uh, and acceptance and safety. I think it was the very first day, actually, that Chris and Marcia kept referring to us as playwrights, and they said, well, as a playwright, you may find such and so, or you may experience this and that. And I thought, oh, oh holy crap, they're, they're talking to us as if we're not students, but we're actually playwrights. I, I, I guess this is what I'm doing. And I just remember by the end of the day, um, looking at my three classmates, I was just a sopping wet mess. <laughs> I was literally crying, <laughs> which was really embarrassing because I was so excited to be here. And just thinking this is exactly where I need to be and want to be. Um, and then I have this picture of us after our two years at graduation and just um, it feels like such a huge part of my life. As intimidating as it can be to enter this community as a new person, very, very quickly, I felt that I could approach anyone, whether that was a first year actor to ask them to come and read something, whether that's Jim Houghton, the man himself. The first day of school, Jim said, whatever you need, it's here. And I found that to really be true. A huge reason why I wanted to come here was the proximity to the acting program. I'd never seen so many talented actors in one in one place in my life. You know, just everybody was just like gorgeous and talented and sexy and you're, you know, you just, it's thrilling. I fell in love with a bunch of the actors and uh, started kind of forming a company kind of in my head at least with who I wanted to work with. You know, a lot of us started writing for some of those actors and their voices. My job was clear. I had to write for these actors. I had to give them something to say. They were so good. And you have to tell an exquisite story and you have to have superb dialogue in order for those actors to have something interesting to do. But really we're in service of them because those are the people that the audience is going to connect with. There was a really strong sense of community and 
just the sense of responsibility to the world that I think all of the students felt in themselves. And I think that President Polisi really worked hard to make sure that we all were aware of. Every week that I came here, being a class was the highlight of my week, seriously. I've thought back to conversations I had around that table again and again. Part of the joy of that room is just like, it is just about like playwrights talking shop. It feels very much like a, like a group of writers and not like you're in class. Chris and Marcia take great care in making sure you know how to talk to your peers about what they write. That we're all in this together. I also really enjoy the strange symbiotic animal that they have become, you know, as two people working as one. The way they balance each other in the room is, is remarkable. When you're hearing your work out loud in class and you get a laugh out of Chris, it is the great the greatest feeling there is. There were a few times he pulled me aside and again sort of zeroed in on that one thing that he had reacted to mostly because it was something that was alive and that in my otherwise dead plays that he would sort of say that's the, that's where you got to go. And when Marsha takes out her pen and writes something down on a piece of paper you know that she's really listening and what she's going to say is going to really sort of open your mind and make you go home and think. Something that Marsha and Chris sort of do, did hammer home, at least with me, was structure. Um, I was all about a really cool character, doing really awful things that are really interesting, but there was no real point to it. They also give you life advice, which is actually <laughs> extremely important in, um, in any of the arts. You know, how to take care of yourself, how to um, make sure that uh, you don't lose sight of what you want to say. They don't teach playwriting. They really don't. They can give you kernels of wisdom, they can tell you anecdotal stories about the business, and they do that in class. And so class is very informal, and we're getting that the whole time. But what they really do is they care for the soul of the writer. It's changed my life being in that program. It was my first taste of any professional training or environment or contact with real working theater professionals. I'd never had any of that stuff before. I mean, I, you know, I like to think I kind of would have stumbled into a career if it hadn't been for Juilliard, but I sort of doubt it. Marsha and Chris really pushed us to become working playwrights and to get a production and to not sit around and just think I'm not quite ready. I felt that I could go out in the world and demand my rights, know that I deserved to be an equal in the room. You don't have to approach theaters and directors on bended knee all the time. Um, obviously, that's important in Hollywood as, well, Hollywood as well. I just think that life of a writer, Marsha and Chris teach you, which is, you know, just this life of up and down and, and perseverance is really important. I felt that they were incredibly generous about sharing professional stories of horror and making you understand that no matter how brilliant you are, it's always going to be a challenge and it's always going to hurt. If you go into the ring swinging, going for the knockout punch every time, sometimes you'll get hit down to the mat. If you're lucky enough to have a career as a playwright, then that's part of it. It's not always, you know, opening night parties and rave reviews. I think more than anything, they gave me the confidence to really feel like I was a writer. It took, I mean, I was 22 when I came into the program. It took me six months just to call Chris, Chris. It makes a place and a community of people that go out and change the American theater. And I know that sounds arrogant, but the truth is they do. Coming out of the program, I felt like uh, it, it wasn't just that like my plays had changed, but like my sense of place in the theater had changed. What Julia has given me is an incredible network of colleagues, peers, friends. I'll call actors from Juilliard, even and and they'll come over to my house and read my play or my new movie. Juilliard gave me a sense of community and people I love and respect, and will hopefully be with for the rest of my career. I don't know where else you have, you know, that quality and quantity of writers who you can then call for the rest of your life as friends and peers in this business. 
you know, you step into a writer's room and there's Alex Cunningham from the class after you. Or, you know, I went to a screening the other day of a Stephen Belber movie. There is this collective group of writers that speak the same language because so many of us studied under Chris and Marsha. Thirteen years later, we still meet every other week and try and replicate the Juilliard experience. And Chris and Marsha, that's really important to them, the, the community, and t to look out for each other and support each other. I mean, they really see writers as a tribe of, you know, lunatics, but a <laughs> tribe that needs to stick together. And that relationship with, with Chris and with Marsha is just, has just gone on in that strange nurturing way where it's not just about the work, but it's about how you are and, and how you're doing. I think I learn more about playwriting every week there in those two years than I have in all the years before or since. And I think about those years and those rooms and those sessions every time I write. Well, I'm teaching now, and so pretty much everything I say in class is something I heard from Chris and Marsha. I think the, the true mark of great teachers is that uh, you may spend however many hundreds of hours in class with them, uh, but when that day comes that you walk out those classroom doors and you go on with the rest of your life, uh, you find that those great teachers are still teaching you every day.